Today we begin the season of Lent. Lent's a time of preparation. So the next 40 days we enter into the desert to pray, to fast, to make sacrifices that may change our lives forever. And hopefully we'll improve where our souls will spend eternity. The main theme for the season of Lent is repentance. Repentance means to turn away from our sins. Repentance moves us to seek God's forgiveness. Repentance calls us ultimately to change our lives. It's the same spirit of repentance that leads us to follow the spiritual practices mentioned in today's gospel. Of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. It's through our sincere repentance that we prepare ourselves for the great gift that we're preparing to celebrate six weeks' time at Easter, the resurrection of our Lord. And if we want to be ready to celebrate fully, we need to prepare ourselves through this season of cleansing, this season of repentance, this season that is Lent. To do so, we must first listen to and be taught by our teacher, Jesus. In today's gospel, Jesus teaches his disciples. In fact, he teaches us how to prepare ourselves for this great mystery, this mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Jesus, our teacher, explains to us how we are to enter into these three spiritual practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Notice that Jesus doesn't suggest these three practices, but rather speaks in the imperative voice. It's when you give alms, when you pray, and when you fast. Not if we do these things. Jesus teaches us that when we give alms, when we pray, when we fast, we have to have the right mindset in doing these things and be doing them for the right reasons. He tells us that we should be practicing these things out of love for God, the Father, and not for public recognition or the admiration of other people. These practices are intended to pull us away from the tight grip of our attachments, the things, the activities, the thoughts, whatever it may be that we're attached to, that we've become deeply connected to, and to draw us away from this or these things and closer to God the Father and to a deeper relationship with Him, sort of reorienting our focus. So as we begin this Lent, I've put together a few ideas on how we can fast, pray, and give alms. Now, year after year, some people may give up the same thing but never be changed. Simple example, I'm not going to eat chocolate or eat sweets. But if we do that year after year for 30, 40 years, nothing has really changed us. So I'm going to propose maybe things that you haven't thought about for all three of these things, for fasting, for almsgiving, and for prayer. So three fasting suggestions this Lent. Number one, fast from technology. Think of all the time that we spend on devices or looking at a screen each day. Imagine how much free time you'd have if you gave up some TV, limited internet use or social media time, maybe texted less, put down the iPad, the iPhone, the iEverything and even deleted some of those games or applications that chew up much of our idle time. What about giving up watching movies for 40 days? Imagine how much time we'd have if we gave up technology or some technology this Lent. Number two, fast from shopping. Imagine how much money you could save and maybe even give to the poor. If we didn't go to Costco as much, maybe Walmart, the mall, for six weeks for things that aren't necessary. Think about all the people in the world that don't have the basic essentials in their life. By us going without a little bit for six weeks, we join in solidarity with these people who the farthest thing from their mind is if they can buy a 20-pack of Kleenex for half price. Number three, fast from watching or playing sports. Many of our young people and our parents Their evenings and weekends are full of games, tournaments, practices of their favorite sporting activity like hockey or soccer. Imagine how much time we would have in our life to grow in other areas, maybe becoming more balanced, more spirit-filled if we stopped or limited these activities during Lent. Imagine a family dinner on a weeknight that wasn't rushed, actually had time to sit down together, say grace, spend an hour, talk about your day together. 
Imagine the quality time you would have if we limited watching or playing sports this Lent. Five suggestions for prayer during this Lenten season. Number one, pray for a different person each day in Lent. Pray for a different person each day in Lent. Maybe someone you know, maybe someone you want to know better. Someone close to you, or maybe someone you've never even met. Could be a prayer of gratitude, could be a prayer for someone's soul, a prayer for their intention. You know they're going through difficult times. Pray for a different person each day this Lent. Number two, attend the Stations of the Cross on Fridays during Lent. As we prepare to celebrate Jesus' resurrection at Easter, spend 30 minutes each Friday in Lent praying or meditating the way of the cross. The Stations are right here in our church, or do so at home with a booklet you can easily purchase. Number three, attend Mass on a weekday, not just on Sundays. The Mass is the highest form of prayer since it represents the whole family of God entering into Jesus' death and resurrection, culminating in us receiving Jesus himself into our bodies. Why not try to celebrate this mystery with our community of faith more than just once a week? Number four, read one chapter of the New Testament each day. When's the time to draw closer to God, deeper in relationship? Take two or three minutes to read one chapter, the Word of God, to allow the relationship that you have with God to go even deeper over the next 40 days. Number five, read a life of a saint. Holiness may seem distant or even impossible when we're honest with our sin and we look at the reality of our lives or we're faced with maybe bad choices or mistakes. But reading the life of a saint, especially the ones that are honest about their sinfulness, they may inspire us to realize that we can do it too if they did it. I'd suggest considering St. Augustine, Maybe St. Francis of Assisi, Therese of Lisieux, there's many to choose from. Read the life of a saint this Lent. Five suggestions for almsgiving this Lent. Number one, give more time to your family. Give more time to your family. Time is the most valuable commodity we have. And if we fast from some of those suggestions that I mentioned earlier, you'll have a lot more time to spend with your children, your families, your spouse, your husband, your wife, Cousins, people that you don't really get to see too often. The people that are important to your life and closest to you. Life is short. Let's love deeply and make time for the ones that we say we care most about. Number two, give a compliment to a different person each day this Lent. Give a compliment to someone different each day this Lent. Sometimes a kind word can make all the difference in someone's day, their week, even their life. We can be generous with giving compliments. They're free. Number three, visit someone who may be sick, lonely, or housebound this Lent. Time spent together with someone warms our heart, and it gives hope to people who are lonely or in need. Visit someone who's lonely, sick, or housebound this Lent. Number four, give of your time by getting more involved in the parish community. Volunteer to help at the next parish event, or suggest something new. Share your gifts, your talents, and interests with the rest of us. We'd love to hear it, to be part of it. Number five, the final suggestion for almsgiving, make a new friend with someone at church. Good friends are hard to find in life, especially friendships based on faith. We all need support in living our faith life. Why not make a good friend in the process? Who knows, you may just help each other get to heaven. The more you put in this Lent will be the more that you give out, the more that you get out. So let's not be afraid to be daring, to challenge the boundaries of what we've done in the past, what we'd like to do this Lent. Maybe try something new, maybe try a couple things this Lent. It may just change our life. May God bless you.